Hello guys and welcome to the Syntho YouTube channel. If you've landed here, I assume you're interested in house music and today I'm gonna to show you the basics of making a house music beat. I'm gonna be using a software called Ableton. You can download it for completely free and then follow along at home and make some tracks with me. So let's get into it. Syntho. So once you've got Ableton open, we need to load our first sounds to get this house groove started. And to do that, we need to click this button here where it says MIDI. And at the bottom, you'll see it says drop an instrument or sample here. And the sample we're going to drop is this drum kit. So to find this drum kit, you need to hit drums on the side. And we're going to use this 909 core kit. So to load this on, we just drag and drop this. And then once it comes up, you can then audition all of the sounds if you want by pressing this play button. And now to draw our first pattern, we need to create what is called a MIDI clip. So to do that, we need to right click here and click insert MIDI clip, or we can just double click. And now we have this window here. And first we wanna draw our bass drum. The bass drum is pretty much the pulse of the track. If we hit this here, it will draw a note. So you just double click to draw a note and the kick drum will go on the one, the 1 1.2, the 1.3 and the 1.4. So if we click there, click there and click there, we've now got our first pattern. So to listen to that, we need to click play on the track and we've got our kick playing. And the next sound I would recommend you to add is the clap. The clap sits on the 1.2 and then again on the 1.4. So the every second kick drum, this will go on top. So we can also adjust the BPM of the track in the top left-hand corner. So at the moment it's 125. We can use our arrow keys to go up in pace. Like that, or use the arrow keys to come down. House track usually sits around 125 to 130. Really depends, but we'll look at 125 in today's session. So once we've done this, I want to draw our closed hat and open hat. But before we do this, I want to extend this bar to two bars instead of one. So to do that, I'm going to hit this button here, which says duplicate. And now it's over two bars. This will just stop it sounding so repetitive because if you're only using one bar for your whole track, it's just going to go round and round again and get quite boring for not only yourself, but also the listener. So now we've got a bit of a longer groove. I want to draw my closed hats in first. So the hats can really go anywhere, typically in between the kick drum and the clap. But we're going to do a note there and a note there. And we're going to do a note there and a note there. Do a note there and a note there. And do one there, one there, one there. And what I'm going to now do is select all of this by highlighting them like this and look at this blue bit at the top of the bar highlighting what i can now do is duplicate this all across so if you're on a mac you press command on your keyboard and d and now we have got this straight away over to the second bar and we're going to add an extra closed hat at the end of here so it's not the same on both now let's press play on that so sounding cool but watch what this will do if we now add an open hat to this groove it's going to completely transform it we're going to do these in between every kick and clap and you will definitely recognize this from tracks you've heard before. So there we go. Now let's hit play. And let's add a snare drum. Do one there, one there, and one there. So that is the drum pattern program, but I want to show you how to adjust each sound so you can tailor it to your own taste. So to manipulate our sounds down here, we click the one we want to play around with, for example, the bass drum or the closed hat, and you'll see this parameter which says decay, basically how long the sound plays for. So if we press play, so what I'm gonna do is press this S button, which means solo, and that means you can hear just the closed hat playing on its own. If we bring that down, then the open hat. Let's bring the decay down on that. So now we have adjusted the length of the open, the closed hat. I'm really happy with the drum groove and it's time to move on to the bass line. So to find a bass line, you can go over to the left and look at instruments. Inside instruments, you've got loads to choose from. And we're going to look at this one called analog. Hit the drop down and then you've got all these bass sounds. I've already found a bass sound I like called saw pure muted bass. So we're going to close that. And now we need to create a MIDI clip for this to draw some notes. So let's double click this. And now we have got what is our keyboard. So you won't have seen this yet. This is different to what we had before. So before we had the drum sounds on the left. If we click here, where this magnifying glass is, 
we can drag down to look at lower notes. So for the bass sounds, I would always recommend going lower in octave. So if we just draw a note here, quite a nice sound straight away. We can manipulate note length by hovering our mouse here. If we can go short or we can go longer, there is no right or wrong. So I'm gonna do a few notes like this. So double click there, double click there. And what we can do is duplicate this loop again. So we've got more than one side and let's do some notes up here. That's quite cool. We can duplicate the notes like that. And let's add an extra note at the end. So we've got. I want to make this note longer at the start. So next we're going to add some chords to our track. I'm going to use this operator instrument. Then we're going to go down to piano and keys and drag our sound on. And if you've got no musical um, background like myself, I really like using this. So hit this chord button. We hit this arrow down and we're going to use this one called minor chord. So if we drag this onto the start of here, we can now play one note in our MIDI clip and it'll trigger all of these. So it'll do one that's plus three semitones, plus seven semitones, plus 10 semitones. We're not going to go into what this means today, but just basically understand that we can play one note in the MIDI clip, but it's going to play many notes on the keyboard, which is then going to create a chord, which sounds amazing. So double click here. We're going to do a note there. We're going to make this length two by hitting this button here. So it says length. Instead of clicking duplicate, we can change the length by doing this. We can make it four. We can make it eight and it extends like that. And if we want to zoom back in, we can hover this mouse here and click it and drag the mouse down and it zooms in. So we want to press play on here now. <laughs> So, sounds pretty cool, but let's add some more. So let's go like this. I want to add an extra note here. I now want to duplicate this loop like we were doing before. Put these over first, duplicate. So it's sounding quite nice, but I want to show you what it sounds like without this chord function so you get an idea. So we can turn that off. Huge difference. So the chord sounds nice, but what would sound even better is if we had some delay on it. So to add some delay, what we need to do is hit this button here and it opens up this again. Then we hit audio effects. Here I've got this delay. We can drag and drop this onto here. And then if you press play. And this dry wet button is the amount of delay which is going to be applied to the sound. So if we turn this down, there is no delay. Then just turn up a bit. Sounds really, really cool. So if you're following on with me, we've got delay. And I now want to show you some more audio effects. So in here, there is absolutely loads. The layout of this can vary depending on which version of Ableton you've got. But what we do now is add something called an auto filter. So anyone that's a DJ will be familiar with filters on a DJ mixer. And what an auto filter does, it takes out either low frequencies, mid-range frequencies, or high frequencies, depending on what setting you've got. So what we need to do is drag and drop it onto here. And now we've got this. And underneath, we've got low pass, high pass, then all these as well. We're just going to use low pass. This means wherever this is, is going to stop the frequencies coming through which are above it. So let me show you what this looks like. If we actually turn the auto filter off with this button here and turn this delay off with this button here, it's what I would describe as a very dry sound. And I'll put the delay on and the auto filter on and let's press play. And you'll often find that you'll create new sounds and not like certain sounds. So for example, now I think the bass sounds getting quite repetitive. So I'm going to try something else out. If we double click here, we can create another MIDI track whilst also keeping the original one. So it doesn't mean you have to scrap your bass line off. You can keep that one there, experiment with a new one, and then go back to the one if you want or, or go this new one. So I'm now going to try some longer notes instead of these short ones. <laughs> duplicate this that's nicer 
What we're gonna do next is add some more synth elements. So if we right click here and insert MIDI track, we can now go back to our instruments and wanna add something shorter, which is on top. So let's use this one here, basic pluck keys. And what we do is just draw some notes. So let's just do these here, let's go see. And what I want to show you is on the bass as well, we can use an auto filter here by going like this. And we can actually filter out some of this mid range. So double click auto filter. If we, want to, if we want to turn a channel off as well, we can just press this button like this. We want to use an auto filter on this one as well. I want to add one more layer of drums and then we're going to look at trying to lay this out so what it looked like in a little sketch and an arrangement. So right click insert MIDI track and now we're going to go back to drums and here is where you can begin to experiment. There's all these different kits that Ableton provide. Go crazy on them. You'll find some really cool stuff. I'm going to choose this one at random, drag this on and we can then audition the sounds if we wish. Let's do a clav. That's nice. Let's just draw some random ones in. Sometimes random is the best thing, folks. So if you're happy with the groove, what we need to now do is arrange this track into the arrangement view. So if we delete this bass, we're going to stick with this original one. We now have this little groove here. So what we need to do is look at this record button here. We're going to hit this button. I'll let this track play for maybe 20 seconds. And just count the bars and then pause it. One, two, three. And now is where the magic happens. So if we hit this button here, top right, we are now in arrangement view. So do not forget to hit this button because if you don't hit the button, it won't play properly in this view. I always like to highlight everything going up to just this end of the bar and delete it to make sure there's nothing there, which, which there isn't. And now we can use this magnifying glass to zoom in. And now we've got eight bars. So if you look at this thing at the top, this is our loop markers. I'm gonna drag this to the start and loop this over here. So now we've got look one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars. And if we press play, we can see it going from left to right. This is obviously very, very repetitive. And you may be wondering, how can I turn this into something which would be a little sketch? So we're gonna select all of this until it's blue and then hit Command and D for those on Mac. So Command D. So what I want you to do now, highlight one of these sections and use your erase slash delete key on your keyboard and watch what happens. Now it's gone. So now if we hit play from the start, we've got 16 bars. That is no drums playing at the start. And this is officially the start of your first ever arrangement. So if you're someone who wants to fast track your learning, check out Syntho. We have got over 400 tutorials with a bespoke made Ableton Beginners course, which will get you up to speed in no time at all. We'll attach all the links below and we look forward to seeing you very soon. Syntho.